when you get to to Hatchaby with Big James, mm -hmm. first describe how you met him, where you met him. I had just got out the shoe program, um, and um, I was in seven A section shoe program, uh, and um, I, they put me on four B yard, and he was on the yard. Him, Three Finger Louis, Slowpoke, uh, Sporty. Um, uh, Sugar Bear from, from Bible, um, Black Dog from Venice. It was a gang of dudes up up, uh, up there with me. Uh, X, little X-Ray from 107, he, I think he was up there with us too. And um, um, Big, Big BJ, man, was just a good dude, man. He When I met him, he, he found out I was from the hood. And um, he found, he, he immediately found out that I was kind of half ass retarded because I didn't he went and smacked a lifer that was riding around with four bodies in the front, uh, uh, two two in the trunk and two, and, uh, two heads in the trunk, one head, two head, one head in the passenger seat, and the rest of uh, uh, the body, about two or three bodies in the back of the trunk. And he, I didn't walked up and smacked. He did some dry snitching shit, and I didn't know he was a lifer. And I, it was some dude, and I smacked him. And somebody told me, you know, you smack, you smack Cody. You know, man, he a lifer. He got bodies, dead bodies and all the man. He said, what the fuck wrong with you? And I, at the time, I didn't give a fuck because Cody had did some dry t snitching type shit. So what I wanted to ask you was this White Big boy. James White boy. or... Big James anybody? took a liking, liking to me. He just grabbed me and threw me under the wing because I, I was kind of wild and kind of active. But did the, anybody try to put CCO on? No, nobody never tried to put CCO, Blue Note, or none of BGF. Keeping it 100, when I first got to Chino, um... And I ran, and when I first got to the joint, I ran into a few guys that was affiliated. But um, if you wasn't interested, they wasn't just the only guys that would get influenced. That they they would work if you that can be influenced. That can, if you could be influenced, they get you. But if you wasn't in, to be influenced, and you know, at the time I had uh, uh, 4800 was Gladiator School. You had already knew not to be no CCO, no Blue Note, no BGF. Or uh, 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 no Vanguard, uh, no involved in no prison gang. If you went to prison, you had already knew this from 4800, because 4800 was like a gladiator school back then. That you, uh, the machine was in motion, and they was teaching. They was teaching us what was cool and what was not cool. So by the time you got to the joint, you knew how to speak Swahili um, fluently. You knew. Um, I mean, man, keeping it 100, Ronnie T was a major influence on me, man. I, and I'm not going to speak on Ronnie T's background, because, you know, uh, but he was an influence too, man. Ronnie T made sure he told me don't be involved in no prison gang shit. And here go these Swahili words, you better start learning this shit. Because they, they talk that shit when you get to the joint. And I just listened. And I, certain little shit that he, was, that he taught me, I listened to him. Ronnie T from West Boulevard. And uh, he 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 just he embraced me and, and made sure I didn't get. And he told me that don't do not if you don't do nothing, do not get involved in no prison gang that shit. Stick with your turf like you've been doing, like you do, like I know you for. Stick with it. And I stuck with the turf. I ain't. I'm just from Gear Gang Crip, man. I ain't from nothing else. I ain't. And I and some of my friends and you know fellow colleagues and comrades might have got caught up, but that ain't my business. And, and I can't speak on that. But me particularly, no, I didn't get caught up in the prison gang stuff because um, uh, the homies I was around wouldn't wasn't allowing no shit like that. For for sure, Big James Miller wasn't allowing none of that. You know, he he, he wasn't on that. No, you from the, from your set, stick with your set, homie. Little homie, keep pushing your line. Do you? And that's all I did. And, you know, I and, and not only he like I said, Ronnie T told me that too. You know, from West Boulevard, he said, no, I don't get involved in nothing. Ronnie T, Ronnie T told that's my nigga uh, for life, you know. So, you uh, know, who else? Uh, man, who, why, why I'm sitting here, man, just uh, talking, man, and enjoying myself because I'm really enjoying this interview right now because I, I get to give y'all the real because I'm a real one from my hood, man, stamped and certified. So I'm really enjoying this interview with y'all. By the way, while we talking, um, did either one of y'all ever run across Monster Cody? Monster Cody, yeah, I ran across Monster Cody in 4800. Monster Cody was a real solid ass dude, man. And Monster Cody had my back too. Monster Cody was one of them dudes that said, ain't nobody finna do nothing to you, Russ. And, 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 Rusty, Rusty, ain't nobody finna do nothing to you. Beat they motherfucking ass, somebody come fucking with you. All, them, all, the, all the 
big shot cats like that, with like Monster and all them cats told me the same exact thing. If somebody come up in your, when I was in 4800, if somebody come up and come up with that bullshit rush, you beat the brakes, beat they motherfucking ass. You fuck they motherfucking ass up, cuz. That's what you do. And that's what I was on anyway. I wasn't finna let nobody hurt me, you know, so. But yeah, Monster, I met Monster Cody. Monster Cody was a real good dude. To meet him. My yeah, was real good. I he was in just, CMC was when, I, when I pulled up. He was he had just paroled CMC. He was on the West Yard. They said he mm -hmm. had just he was paroled. A good dude, man, you can't take that. You can't take that from him. But I missed him. You no, know. You can't take that. He wasn't on. He wasn't with the funnies, man. He always was trying to be right to do, especially in jail amongst it. Uh, uh, when it's all Crips, and it's just us. He really was on that stick together shit, man. I always embraced that. Stick together. I was never with the beef or with Crips. I ain't never feel. I was never feeling that, homie. I'm gonna keep it 100, man. I I I I liked it, that influence that I that I was getting from Big James Miller them, man. They wasn't with that G kid with Crips killing Crips and Crips set tripping Crips. No, them dudes was against all that bullshit. They was about unity amongst all of us, and that's what I was. That's that was I was I was infatuated with that right there. Unity amongst all of us. I love my hood. I love my homies. I always will. I don't care how old I get. But uh, I'm right now, I'm, I, as far as any, I, I would love, I would love for everybody to get along. Another thing about me, as far as a, a person personality today, I would love for us to get along. You know, with everybody. You know, because it's about uh, uh, unity anyway. It's not about uh, uh, hurting a brother and uh, 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 negative energy. It's about pushing positive energy. Every single day I get up, I wake up, I push positive energy. I don't do half the stuff I used to do as a kid, you know, but I'm from my hood. I, I don't I don't never deny that. I won't never ever deny that. I'm up from my hood, but as every day I wake up today, I don't I don't push the, the line on uh, 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 negative energy. I don't I wake up positive. You have to bring some some you, you got to bring that out. I'm not the type of person to be uh, exposing that side of me anymore. I don't I try to avoid that. And I try to stay away from people that send it that that has to go there. I, you know, I try to stay away from that area. Not saying I won't uh, step up and be county folk, because like I said, I love my hood and love my homies. I, I, that's something I can't even deny if I wanted to. I've been selling music. I've been doing music for the last twenty years or something. I ain't, I'm, you know, I ain't been doing nothing else. I've been straight into the music. I've been saving them. I've been doing doing that Captain Saver Woman game. I've been playing that game. I'm, 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 I'm Captain Saver Woman. I'm sticking to it. Yeah, I'm sticking to it. That's what I've been doing, singing and making music. I ain't been doing nothing else. And I like what I do. And, and, and recycling and stuff like that. But other than that, yeah, you know, I, I'm glad to have been a part of this uh, podcast. Uh, uh, podcast of uh, uh, Kev Mack. I'm glad that you invited me. To uh, come in, uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, I really appreciate that because I, I, I mainly, I, I really, really mainly wanted to um, um, let really let let everybody know that everybody got a story, man. You know, you just hearing mine. You know, but everybody got a story, and, and mine ten toes down, man. I ain't got no reason to lie to kick it. I was in forty eight hundred. You know, the first one. I was I was in I was in 48, 47. I was in uh I was in uh 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 uh, 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 uh the shoe program when the shoe program first came out. I was in Palm Hall and Birch Hall and Cypress and all that. I was I was there. I I didn't been to the prisons and I didn't been through the ringers and all that stuff, y'all. So and I know what's good. I, shoot, I, I, today I'm trying to bring do nothing but positive. I'm trying to do do nothing but good every single day of my life. I ain't trying to be a part of nothing else. Get some money and keep this unity amongst my hood. Keep my hood pushing. Keep these cats on their heads, on their toes, and keep pushing this line. If they need me, they got my number. Because I, I ain't, not, as long as I'm walking and breathing, I'm down with my hood. So ain't no way around that one. Ten toes down. Ain't no way around it. So if they need me, they know how to find me. But particularly, specifically, I'm, I'm on a whole nother, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing straight positive energy out this spirit, out this body right here. Straight positive energy. Positive thoughts, positive everything. Because what I'm trying to do is get right back to real deep music stuff, like pr producing. And See, I'm on that page right now. I'm trying to get back to the music. I'm trying to do right, man. I'm, I'm, I'm 55 years old, man. Come on, man. You get older, man. You got to stay true to yourself, man. Come on. I'm a G motherfucker from my, my neighborhood, man. I ain't got time for no negative energy. I don't have time for no negative nothing. I'm trying to be a positive 
influence, a, a plus. I'm trying to give, give back, not uh, or take away. It's about giving back, man, at some point. So that's what page, that's what level I'm on today. 21, 21, going into 2022. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on my A game. I'm trying to give, I'm trying to give my best foot and give my best at all times. That's where I'm at with it. If you really want to know what I'm up to, Big Russ from Gear, what he up to? I'm trying to do what's right, man, and be a positive influence on my hood, and my homies. And I'm, like I said, I, it, it, it bothers me. Some of these cats don't be listening. Listen to your G's when they talk to you, homie, because they ain't gonna lie to you and misguide you. Motherfucker, trying to make sure you don't go through what they went through. When they talking to you and they trying to, and they trying to t uh, or they getting at you, mm -hmm. that's the problem today. These youngsters, y'all don't want to listen to y'all G's, man. Grab you a real G motherfucker that you know ain't gonna lie to you, man. Ain't gonna misguide you, and let that nigga teach you some shit, man. Go with facts over fear. Yeah, facts over fear. See, Big James Miller. That's what I was about to go. Big James Miller, man. That's I'm I'm telling you right now. If it wasn't for Big James Miller, man, I don't know, man, because when I when I got to 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 to, uh, to hatch me that four yard, and when I got up there with Big James Miller, Three Finger Louis, and all them a uh, black dog and all, all them dudes embraced me, man. You know, and and and, and, and shoot, to to this day, I use this what they taught me, man. Because I, when I got on that yard, I was 19, 20 years old. I didn't know nothing about being no man. I just knew this was gear crit. That's all I knew. We talking about Black Dog from Showline? Yeah, we talking about original Black Dog from Showline. That was my, man, that nigga, a good nigga, man. That nigga threw me under the wing, just like uh, James Miller. All them niggas, Big Ducci. All them boys threw me under the wing, man. Uh, 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 Sugar Bear from uh, 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 Bible Crip uh, uh, threw me under the wing. I was a young cat, man. I was full of, I was full of, I was full of the, whatever, I was full of that drama. If they wanted it, we was bringing it to them. I was, I was a young, little young knucklehead. Torpedo. Man. Yeah, I was a torpedo. I was a full throttle torpedo. Is it anything either one of y'all could tell me about Bible Crips? Heck yeah, them some good cats. Where was they located? Yeah, over there in the Midtown. They, they, they was yeah, Queen Air Park. Mm -hmm. Over in the mid, over there in the Midtown area. Yeah, off of Pico, Queen Air Park, uh, L.A. High, around in, in back of L.A. High, all up through that area. Uh, uh, EP Eric Payton and yep, them. Yeah, um, EP them. EP, uh, Rich Loke and all of them. Um, uh, 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 uh Reggie and Gerald and all of them. Uh, Mingo uh, from Schoolyard Junkles. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, I get my prop to Mingo from Schoolyard. Was they in Schoolyard area? Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. all day long. That, 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 that area. All day long. That, so both I, sides of Venice. They yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All, yeah, all day long, man. Yeah, Bible Christians, some good dudes, man. Would the Midtown family eventually turn? The ones by Queen Anne Park. Huh? Oh. They actually went up. I believe that shit, that was Shaft for them. That, they went to the that was Shaft. Into the that, jungles and all yeah, the Yeah, they, they scattered out. They cause, scattered out. Because that was Shaft for them. Shaft wound up going to Sherm Alley, hanging out in Sherm Alley, and he never left the jungles. And the LT had LTD. Remember Shaft with the yeah, LTD? Yeah. Hung out in, in Sherm Alley. Yeah. All through the J's. Who were some of the big names in the jungle when y'all was coming up? Um... I, I could I could say T Rogers, T Rogers all day long. Tukufu. Yeah, rest in peace, Takufu, rest Tukufu, in peace. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say um, uh, Salamine, Rich Dog, Rich Dog. Um, man, I forgot all man. That's a uh, man, you know I know you. Know <laughs> I know I'm trying you to go know. there, man. I'm trying to. I can't. I'm all right, man. It's uh, been so long, man. Man, it's it's it's. it's I just quite remember us going. I just remember us going up to that park, and uh, 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 uh ex con from A Trade Gangster. Uh, 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 well, what's the name of that park in the jungle? And he said, "Hold up, hold up, cuz jumped out that 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 Will station Rogers? wagon." No, he said, hold uh, on, um, right on Jim the bread. Gillian. Yeah, Jim right Gillian. On the bread. Jim, yeah, Jim Gillian. During the time yeah, that they when was, they first built, let me let me say this: during the time that they was building Jim Gilliam's in 1980, you know, uh, me and my brother was living over there. We was living, we was in war with a real, real tough then. So you know, it was an on-site thing. So you know, we run into them. You know, they run into us, and, and it, it had got off, after they had got with my brother. You know, somehow we 
we got time, we we be looking for them and we couldn't find them or it just wasn't right at the time. So me and my brother had decided, well, man, we just going to go up to that park where they was building that park. So we decided to go up to the damn park, Jim Gilliam, man, because we needed that. You know, this is in 1980, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't think too many Crips in this day would have had that much heart. But uh, me and my brother walked up there, and as we I just walked, wanted one on one. we seen the blood that, that was hanging in the park. So as soon as we seen them, we said, "Let's go, let's go get at these cats and and see where they from. If they blood, then we gonna tell them we need that. We want a fair one. We just want a fair one. That's you know, it, that's all. Uh, we ain't trying to trip. We just want to get down with them. You know, see what I'm saying? So as we walk up, we telling them we want to get down with them. So they start saying no, so they act like they want rat packers. Oh, they, so finna rat packers. they was finna rat packers. So as they finna rat packers, your boy from A Train X Con from A Train Gangster drove up pulled and up, up, pulled, up. Up. pulled up. He was a, he hold had, up, little homie. Hold up, little he homie. Was a, cuz, hold up, hold up, cuz. No, y'all, no, hold up. But hold up. Y'all the young dot moves. No, hold up, y'all. Let me explain that. Okay. At, at, at that time it wasn't but two crips that I can actually say or remember that the Blackstones got along with if they seen and they respected. It was ex con and it was Doodle from the 60s, drove a orange bug. Yep. He stayed over on Mur Murfield. Yep. For some reason, he had it like that with yep. the Don Moves. They was, he, they was not finna fuck with him and they wasn't finna fuck with ex con And when we, when we walked up on them and they was finna try to do their thing with us, Ex con drove up and told them they couldn't do that. Man, hold it, up. it made us get in the car and got us up out of there. The I think he, he had an old '63 uh, Chevy blue station wagon. station wagon, sky blue, sky blue, candy blue, sky blue, candy blue. Candy I believe blue he one rest in peace. Candy, candy blue. But I get my up. But ex con nigga was a real one, man. He, nigga, ex con. He was a man, solid man, that, man, that nigga was real. Nigga. It he wasn't was a solid. Ten toes down. He, what, he, what, where was he riding around? And what was he? He saved out. Nigga had a blue rag, that. nigga, and his dang on what you call it, riding around he, he in the jungles, in, nigga. He, 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 did, he, he lived had, in the jungles and find this space. He had all he had. And all of them him. respected him. They didn't have no problems with that kind no of No matter where he went. In the that's jungle. one. He the only one had him. him and Doodle from yeah, Six Doodle. Do you know yeah, Doodle? Doodle. Uh -uh. He, have you ever heard of him? Mm -mm. Yeah, he drove an orange bug. He lived in the jungles. Yep. And they would not and he was up he was at Dorsey every day. Mm-hmm. When you got out of school and you went up to Dorsey, he was out in this little bug. Do you know orange. Benny from Six O? Mm -hmm. Cause ben, OG dark skinned Benny. I know two Bennys. Okay, his one a paid off brother Benny and and Lil Willie them uh, uh uh they 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 from uh, City uh, Stone. They City Stone. And was born and raised across the street from Second Avenue. I brought like them cats, man. Benny, they big brother. Good dudes, man. Yeah, man. Benny, I was, the, Benny was the only Benny was the only crip over only there. Only crip over there at that at that time. Benny was the only crip over there. Cause he pulled me under the wing. I'm fighting. I'm on at the park fighting the dude. Cause the Tony Tony had sick pneumonia. So the, the, the back then, Tony and it, sick pneumonia. And it, and it was, sick, Tony stayed next door. And Benny on, had on, about on six or seven brothers or something. Get that and dude, one so sister, I'm fighting. And they ended up liking me, man. They left me alone. Little Ripper, little man, and a few others. Uh, do you remember when crack first hit your hood? Yes, I remember when crack hit my hood. It changed my hood tremendously. It it actually took my hood down. Hmm. It took the people down. It took the neighborhood down. It destroyed a lot of lives. It did a lot of bad things to us. When you look at it at the end of the day, we thought it was a win-win situation. Youngsters coming up. You know, but uh, it was it was trickery and it was a waste. Um, I believe the the crack game was sitting down in my neighborhood um, to bring us down, like it did all neighborhoods. You know, um, just I think that fortunate with my neighborhood, my neighborhood probably was the most devilish neighborhood with it. Didn't no neighborhood rock like my neighborhood. Um, at one point, we was on twenty twenty. You know, there, I don't think there's no hood in L.A. could crack like that to have six or seven streets and you got 20 people on all streets and everybody sell out an ounce in 15, 20 minutes hmm. on all three row streets. It's going like that 24-7. You know, um, it would be 
10 of us out there on one block and we all had rock for rock or dubs or dubs ounces and uh every and it'd be 10 of us and we all be be sold out rock for rock within an hour and a half and it'd be 10 of us with two or three ounces a piece did Tootie Reese ever come through your hood? Or? Tootie Reese came through. LaRue came through. Um, uh, uh, it's one guy that came through that uh, was 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 is very influential right now that I notice. And um, he used to come over with Daff and, and and come over and holler at Daff and all of them. And it's, it's a guy named Sam. <laughs> Sammy Watson, man. You know, I remember he used to come hang on Carlin. All of the ballers came on Carlin, man. All of the players, all of the ballers came on Carlin, man. Well, what was the club scene like on Adams back in the day? The club scene was great, man. You know, the the the, the, the Adams scene, the, the really the Adams scene was the Godfather scene. You know, um, uh, they had the showcase right there on Adams and Crenshaw. You know, uh, across the street from the barbecue stand, from Leo's Barbecue in the gas station right there, uh, on, on on the slop house side. That's where Tookie and all them hung. And then they shut the showcase down and they moved around there on, across the street from Johnny Pastrami on um, on Bronson and uh, Adams. And My so, prayer. and they had the, the youngsters was the youth was us was down on Rimpaw and Adams. No, they had the showcase on Bronson and Adams. That's what Tookie and, 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 and Jamel and all of them and, and Capone and all of them was hanging and was partying every weekend. Right there on Adams and Crenshaw, across the street from Leo's, where the hardware store mm -hmm. is now, and then around the corner across the street from Johnny's Pastrami's. So a lot of people say that that's the blood hood. They didn't get that until after 80. Because that's where all the motorcycles, that's where all the dab, yeah, it was, but that actually wasn't a hood uh, all the way, all the way, because Tookie and them was all right there. So for the Bloods to say that they, that was they hood, Johnny Pastrami, no, they didn't get that into, after, not Adams right there. You know, now they came through and they all lived right there, and they, but they couldn't come claim that because all the OG Crips was right there. Yeah, you know, the weekends, during the week, they was on the bikes. They was doing their thing. So, you know, that's what I know about Adams, man. Adams was a big party street, you know, that whole Adams, man. Was it a lot of black people? Oh, Adams was full of blacks. Actually, back during the seventies and the sixties, you know, when you when you went there, when it came to Adams, that Adams, you didn't see many. Uh, Adams, Adams was at least seventy to seventy-five percent black. Was you old enough to remember when prostitutes walked on Adams? Uh, yes, I was old enough to remember. But the, in my neighborhood and in, in my area where I live, they was right there on Adams and West Boulevard Hood down at the Hi Hat and the Adams Motel. But the main stroll was Washington from between La Brea and Washington and down to Redondo. You know, that's where they ran. You know, that's where all the pimps and players and, you know, when it really went viral. You know, and I, I believe that's, it, that's probably the second biggest whole stroll in history, you know, after Figueroa, Washington. But it shut down now. They finally shut it down. What about the boy, S-Man? Yeah. I, I wasn't around. I was in prison. I was in prison. I didn't even get to meet him. No big deal. I was in prison. No big deal. His name just always comes up because they thought y'all did it. Then they found out the 20s did it. Yeah. Um, um, so don't worry about that. Yeah, I, 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 I was in prison at that time. I didn't yeah. get to meet uh, S man. I met him. He was cool. He gave me, he gave me, he gave me some shit when I got out, and he told me that he, he bus came to me, but yeah, started that's, crying, that's, and hey, told me he that. wanted to get put on. And I told all my homies, don't do it. Think about it. it they was going through a war. He started a big old war okay. over there in the projects. Okay. He the one started that war. With the Venices. And yeah, Venice, with the, no, the no, with the Cobra Cities. Cobra Cities, okay. Yeah, yeah okay. That, come on, man, let me say it. It was the Cobra City, and they ran them up out of there. The, the Mexicans, the Cobra City Mexicans, they started that war. So when everybody from the projects came to the gear hood, when they came to the gear hood, he fell in. But see, 
he was balling. And he was he was he was he was he was, he was working with like five, ten birdies at one time. He was he was they backbone. I was in the joint. He was controlling they whole Fresh. when it came to the money game. He was they money game. He was they money man. And so he came and started kicking it with the homies and he wasn't in the project because he was holding down Venice and Cove City, I believe. Cause he was getting his bread. He was on one by his bread, and his and his gang banging was right. But uh, apparently, his homies was getting into it with him, cause they did, a lot of people didn't think they was doing how they wanted him to do or whatever, you know. And that's just that's a situation with any hood, and we did the best we could do. That's why we didn't. I didn't allow the homies to quote him in and to bring him in. That's why I, I went against allowing that because I didn't want to get no conflict behind that, you know. So I told him, you know, he could just love, love the homies and we love him, but he had to stay who he was in order for him to be right with us, you know, because he was too far gone, you know. So once I explained that to him, he was, he was okay, you know. But uh, I loved the youngster, man. He, anything that he could do for me or my homies that he ran with that was solid, he would do it. He only was a solid rep, man. We ain't do nothing but love him, man, and if anything. Uh, did you guys get any blowback before they found out who was responsible? Well, well you know, uh, there was some, uh, some some blowback there, you know, but you know that that's what any that that's what any situation. But it's 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 already really revealed. And everybody knowing, yeah, how can we? We ain't did nothing like that. That ain't true. And what it is, the problem is, is I don't think did nobody know who did what, and they they didn't know who did what, and you know it's like that. With you know, some people don't talk. Some people talk. You know, but I, I take that to my grave, man. I was in prison when it happened, but ain't no Gil gang harm, uh, S-Man, in no form or fashion. You know, we did nothing but love him, man. Now, he probably went somewhere and had a shootout with the 20s with the homies, you know, and they don't want to talk and put their self out there, but we ain't did nothing but loved him at the end of the day, man, from the beginning to the end, and I hate that that happened to him. And I just give a shout up to him. Rest in peace. Yeah, God bless his spirit. Yeah, we both want to just give a special shout out to our homie, man. And we just want to let him know that he in our prayers and we uh, still support him. And we just want to let him know uh, to keep his head up and come home. You're going to stay that's fighting. All. That's it. That's all. Big Woody, man. Yeah, Woody Low. Man. Woody Low. That's it. That's Woody, all, yeah. man. He up. He, yeah. uh, he, he, he under, man. Okay. He under right now. But we need our homie out. We we need oh. our homie with us. Yeah. You know, he a good dude, man. He got a lot to offer, and he, especially youngsters. And we need him with us right now. Yeah. So, yeah, we just wanted to send a shout out to you, Woody Lowe. You know who you is. You know what it is. That's right, Woody. We love you, Woody. Love Come you, home, man. baby. We support Come home, you. Man. Whatever you need, whatever we can do, whatever you know, we, we support, support you the whole nine. You already know, man. Uh, any positive message you want to leave? Yeah, the positive message is, man, if if I can talk to the youngsters out here, especially my black men, you know, um, I just want to say uh, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm, I'm not going to try to be nobody's teacher or nobody's leader, but it's my right to say it to us black men because our trials and tribulations are heavy. And what I would like to say to you all, we need to think things out before we even make a decision. So let's try to think things out before we make the decision and make sure we put facts over feelings. Throw them damn feelings up out the way, man. Throw the damn feelings up out the way. My feelings is so thrown up out the way. I already know them dropping 10 million people down in my country that ain't got nothing to do with my country and my race. Now we got to take care of 10 million people on top of America because we're the only ones spend 2.5 trillion a year. The black people with social security numbers, 
and we give it and it don't come back. Now they didn't drop 10 million people. I know y'all ain't voted for this, man. We need to step up, man. We need to go back and regroup and I don't like the white boy either, but the white boy got the damn money maker. He got the money printer, man. So at some point, we're going to have to sit down with him. So the longer we take, man, the better off we're going to be, man. We can't sit down with nobody else, and, and nobody else never gave us no money. So let's at least try to get it right, man. Trying to fight with the, uh, uh, we, and can't nobody fight for us. We got to be wise and fight for ourselves. So if I got a message to us, man, let's let things play out, man. Don't rush to judgment. When it comes to us, don't be quick to say nothing. Let it play out. And think about it twice before you make a decision. That's all I got to say, man. Peace to all my brothers, man. Until you game bangers, man, it ain't good, man. It's, it's about brotherly love, man. It's about brother love, man. Let's do better, man. We're going to be obsolete if we keep going like this.